Hey, yo, what's happening, guys? How you doing? And good evening, Mr. Adventure here. Or just call me Mr. M.A. or Muddy Son. But welcome back again to another reaction video at your service. What's happening, guys? Long day. Yeah, the mornings suck. And I did not think it was going to be raining this hard, let alone of the thunderstorm that was crackling. And at least it, I, I dodged the bullet. Well, some of it because it was still raining at that time. And yeah, it, it's it, it's just nasty outside. But at least I did get to see Kimetsu no Yaiba Demon Slayer movie, uh, a special to the, the, to the prelude to of uh, the Hashira training. So at least that this was the, the movie was good, and that uh, the best way to, uh, to, to to you know to wash the taste out of my mouth from Madam Web. So there's that. So, yeah, I am half tired and half awake at the same time, but uh, NXT has just already started. But I am going to be checking out of a clip that is from Chris Van Villet. Now, I've heard of this dude and where he interviews with uh, pro wrestlers and superstars, and there would be some snippets and clips during of his interviews. So, here is a request that belongs to Storm Shadow, and which I am going to be checking out of a clip where Bobby Roo on his glorious interest theme. So, let's just check this one out. And let's begin. And uh, be sure to have your notifications turned on for every new video that's going to be posted on this channel. From yours truly, your friendly neighborhood reactor man, the soul of a Japanese brother man, the king of metal slash J metal reactor is what I do. It may not be as 100% perfect, but it is the best effort that I can do for every single one of you out there because this is what I love to do. And time to react. Your entrance theme got you over immediately. 100%. 100%. percent like true or false, this was originally supposed to be the theme song for Shinsuke Nakamura. I believe so. Yeah, I what, believe so. Really? And I remember, um, I think you're right. I remember just being, uh, and it, the look, when I when I signed, I had no idea about this song, right? I We kind of talked, uh, we being Triple H, and I talked a little bit about like what I wanted to do and character-wise and what, where I was, what I was doing at TNA and no, the, I always like wearing the robes. I always like being like a throwback guy. Yeah. Not that I wanted to be Ric Flair, but I always just loved that look, yeah. you know? Ah. And I wanted to bring the robe back. And, um, you know, I was at NXT TV one day. This was before I debuted. And he's like, I want you to listen to this song. And, you know, listen to it. And it was like, eh, I don't know. What do you mean? Right? It was just, it was different, <laughs> right? It wasn't like a traditional theme song. But then I was like, well, this this is might work with like the robe and like if the presentation is right, this will, this will work. And the presentation was above and beyond what I ever imagined. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely that song changed my career really. And it's crazy to think about that because everything else could have been the same, the presentation, the wrestling, the, the gear, yeah. everything with a different song, your WWE run might've looked completely different. Yes. A hundred percent. Yeah, no doubt. And, uh, yeah, that song. I mean, people still talk about that song today. You know what I mean? My it's, friend entered to his wedding yes, to that song. I've seen a bunch of them. Really? Yeah, that's, that's, and that stuff is wild to me, right? <laughs> like, it's unbelievable when you when you see, and I mean, I'm, I'm at a hockey game. You know, the Nashville Predators used it uh, for when they, after they won hockey games, they would play my song. What's the story behind that song? It was just a, a song that they, they created and they were waiting for the right person to get it to? I guess so, yeah. Wow. It was just kind of sitting there in the, in, the, in the library, apparently. And uh, yeah, I was just lucky enough to get it. And then it turned into, I loved it, what, what Johnny and Tommaso were doing with the Glorious Bombs. Yeah, yeah. And that made it even like more of this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just did that as a joke. And the first one was such a hit that we just continued to continue to do them. It was a it was, Whenever we had some downtime in, in NXT on the on the road shows, because we all traveled together on the bus, right? So yeah, we'd always think of uh, creative ideas, to, things to do. That song is like the epitome of what your character was, though. Like you could play that song for someone who's never watched wrestling before, and they'd go, "Oh yeah, I think I I understand what this guy's all about." Yeah. And then when you actually see what your entrance looked like, it's like, "Oh yeah, that's exactly what I envisioned." Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it it's just a it's amazing how one little thing can change everything for you. Right. And that's the nature of sports entertainment, right? It's like you could be the greatest wrestler in the world. You know what I mean? Bell to bell. Yeah. But 
if you don't have that connection with the audience, you're just another guy. Okay. So the glorious interest theme was originally was going to be for Shinsuke, but uh, it just turned over to Bobby Roode. Okay, so that would explain to it uh, how he got the the theme and through NXT and to SmackDown, and I could still instantly remember how the song plays and that he was in his prime after that the, his his contract with TNA that that did expire and that uh, making his debut and that instantly did put the, the 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 role of his character because the key word that is, that is just simply glorious because he is that guy who has all the, the the talent, the ability, and the agility that that what makes him that being as glorious. And um, I will confess to that, that I, I was so addicted to the song, and that uh, th- it it was that epic and very such of um, with the through of the of the the the, the, the hymns, the harmonies. And the vocals that really does represent of what what that song was all about, and it 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 was that you know that was considered to be as a legendary, and and so that instantly that 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 put his career on the biggest one that everyone was talking about, and I still can I still remember instantly a couple years back. Uh, when Matthew Reinhardt that, that uh, put his um, you know doing his his singing promos and that into that that that, that interrupted Lee and everything was pitch black and then you hear that the, the piano keys were playing and all I all I hear was that glorious. No, I won't give in. I won't give in. And that instantly, that that, that where the, that Bobby makes his uh, SmackDown debut. I remember it very well. All right, so this is a uh, this is a very interesting of uh, information. How did that the the glorious that that became that so attached to Bobby, but technically did that it was a it wasn't going to be for Shinsuke. So cool beans and uh if you have not heard of uh chris van villet uh that i encourage you to go check it out the, of his channel and uh if you like to see all of uh, of uh through the snippets and the clips during of his uh, interviews with uh, superstars and pro wrestlers then i encourage you to go check it out and see it for yourself and uh if you guys did enjoy that Hit the like button and also leave a comment down below and I'll catch y'all in the next video. So let's give it up for Shadow for that request and I thank you for that. But uh, if there is any other suggestions, just let me know and I will do the best I can to make it happen for each and every single one of you out there. And peace.